Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. Continuing our exploration of the data science life cycle, we are now ready to look at data requirements. There are close ties between the data requirements, data collection, and data understanding. Keep that in mind as we move forward. In a project, you may cycle through these three elements of the life cycle multiple times. Simply put, data requirements is about what data do we need to solve our business problem. When discussing data requirements, you will hear terms such as records, columns, attributes, and features. These terms come from different disciplines. In brief, you can see that a record is a collection of columns or attributes, and that features means the same thing as attribute. For example, a customer record will include attributes such as first name, last name, address, phone number, and so on. There is one more term that you may hear depending on the type of machine learning techniques you are using. It is target value. In general, machine learning and AI falls into two categories, supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised means that the algorithm needs data that also includes the right answer. For example, if you are looking at customer churn, you want to collect data on customers and include if they left or stayed. This way, the algorithm can find patterns that will have a good probability to get to the right answer. So supervised learning requires the addition of a target value. Unsupervised learning usually involves grouping or clustering. Clustering also leads to interesting techniques such as recommendation engines. As you figure out data requirements, it is obvious that some of that data will come from internal systems, but you are also likely to find that you also need data coming from external sources. For example, insurance companies may want to use traffic, accident, and crime data to augment their understanding of their customer situation. So, how much data do you need? You have probably heard that the more data, the better. When big data was all the rage, we kept hearing, the one with the most data wins. This relates to the fact that having more data to train a model usually results in a higher quality model. There is more to it than having a lot of data. We also have to have the proper distribution of data. For example, let's look at a churn problem. Assuming that a company has a churn of 5%, that means that most of their data relates to customers that are staying. If we were to use all the data, we would end up overwhelming the modeling since 95% of the records are not churning. In this case, the limitation is how many churn records do we have. You may want to review video 35 to learn more on the subject. In other types of problems, it can be more subtle. You have a good balance on gender, age, income, and so on. Another side effect of the imbalance could be that the data itself will introduce bias. All this to say that data requirements is not as simple as getting data. This is one reason why projects cycle through data requirements, data collection, and data understanding before moving to data preparation and modeling. If your solution deals with AI and deep learning, you may be able to compensate for the lack of data by taking advantage of predefined models and complement them with your own data to train a few layers of the neural network. This is often done in image recognition type problems. Data is the key to a successful model. Do not assume that you have all the data you need. The more complete the data is, the better chances of success you have. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science, and don't forget to subscribe.